<laughs> right, welcome everybody. This is uh, the first of 20 uh, talk, up, yeah, tw talk Up Norwich uh, talks. Um, my name is Martin Blackwell. I'm Head of Operations at the Business Improvement District in Norwich. Uh, get the boring bits out of the way first. Uh, the fire exit is behind you. Um, you know that because you came in it. Uh, refreshments behind you, toilets are through on the left hand side in the forum. So this uh, business support hub uh, is very new. Um, we are here to provide support, help and guidance to any SME. Uh, they can come in and talk to us. We may not know all the answers, uh, but if we don't know the answer, we generally know who to find the answer from. So it's about signposting uh, as well as giving that advice and support. Uh, so I work for the Business Improvement District, the BID for short, and our job it really is to try and position Norwich as one of the uh, leading cities in the UK, which, which we are. Uh, we're working for the business community. We're actually funded by the business community. So everything we do is, does what it says on the tin, the, the Business Improvement District. This hub is part of the uh, Community Renewal Fund, partly funded by the government, uh, partly funded by the three business improvement districts in, in Norfolk, uh, for ourselves, Kings Lynn and Great Yarmouth, and we're delighted to be working with those two locations as well. So what I'm about to tell you about the Onwards Norfolk project is available uh, in Kings Lynn and Great Yarmouth, as well as Norwich. And so, uh, we have three main strands to that work. One is around uh, digital skills. Uh, so uh, starting at level two, people can get that intermediate training. So it's not absolutely beginner level, but you don't have to have huge skill set. Um, but we'll take you through, if you've got no skills at all, we can work on that. The second one is with hospitality and leisure. And this is giving uh, 16 different courses available uh, to anybody in that sector, whether they're employed or not. If they're unemployed and they want to move into that sector, there's some really good training there. And the third element is net zero waste. So we want to support our businesses moving towards net zero waste. And that's a really important project and it ties in with a European project we're part of, which is called Upcycle Your Waste where we're trying to encourage people to take those waste streams and use them in a much, much more uh, creative way. So onwards, uh, Norfolk is the, the overall umbrella for that. Uh, there are lots of these around the uh, room. Pick one up. If not, go on to Onwards Norfolk website and you'll find details of all the projects I've just talked about. One project that is coming later in the year uh, is going to be called, is about working in Norwich. So if you take that phrase, work in Norwich, and you turned it into an acronym, it would spell? Win. Absolutely. Do you all work in Norwich? You're all winners! Yay! So, so that, that is uh, hopefully going to work, and we'll take that project forward late, later in the summer. But for now, I'd like to hand over to uh, Lucy Marks, who's the MD of uh, Norfolk Networks, and she's going to introduce our first speaker. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see you here. Our first, um, first talk. Um, I'm absolutely delighted. Norfolk Network is really delighted um, to be part of something new here, um, part of this uh, business support hub and also part of a new series of programmes. Um, so Norwich, Norwich talks up business. Um, we've got 20 talks, so 20 over uh, weekly talks at this time, 12:30, um, up until the end of June. Um, and I'm really delighted to sort of be designing these and to bring, um, to showcase some really young innovators, some really visionary, experienced um, founders, and also academic researchers who can share some really interesting um, insights um, into business as well. Um, so thank you very much for coming 
And I'd also, I think I'd just like to introduce Stephen now, because Stephen has been brilliant to start our, start our talk. Now, um, I've been waiting two years to hear you talk um, in person, so no pressure whatsoever. No, um, two years ago, in April um, 2020, um, we all had a planned a, a night, an in-person event, and of course we had to cancel it. So I have really been looking forward to this <laughs> in person. So um, Stephen's got over 30 years. Um, in brand strategy, working in food and health and fashion, extreme sports and football. Um, and I'm really delighted that he's coming here um, today to talk. And I know that at the heart of everything he does is putting people first. So let's say, Stephen, let's talk up, put people first. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here today. What I'm really happy about is you've all started clapping <laughs> first, and I haven't finished yet, and you started clapping. And um, no, in, it's great to be here. Um, thank you, Lucy, and uh, thank you for um, Norwich Bill as well for inviting me. Um, I'm going to talk about people first. Before we get to that, we need to get a little bit warmed up and, and so forth. So I just want to ask you all a question. So just and hands up would be great. So hands up those of you that have been on a video call while you're on mute. Okay, most of you like that, okay. Hands up those of you that have been on a video call and you've only been dressed from the waist up. Okay, good, good, good. How many of you have been on a video call when this happened? That, 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 that. Okay, well, I'm glad to say that's not going to happen today, okay? It's not gonna to happen today because we are in person. Haven't we missed it? Yeah. Hey? Haven't we missed it? Whenever I do a talk, I always want to make sure that you can take away a few business messages, but also that you can take away some personal messages as well, because I think that's really important. So the first thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you to take away is, is, is a unique way of how to dance and move to one, two. Okay? Now, I'm, a, I'm professionally trained from a child as dancer, and I was classically trained. And one of the things that I was taught was one, two, and then we used to dance to any genre of music if you can understand one, two, one, two, one, two. Now you're all thinking, what the hell is he talking about and does this actually work? So we're going to put it to the test. And this is why I was really interested in the fact that you can all clap, because we're going to try and clap. Now what we're going to do, you guys are going to help me out, because I'm the icebreaker, I'm breaking the ice, not you, so you can all sit there comfortable and feel relaxed. I'm the one that's up here nervously getting hotter and hotter by the second. So we're going to clap. So all I want you to do is this. So we can roll. We can do the side step. And then you can put a little bit of effort into it. And then we can, and then we can pop with it, and we can lock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so today's talks about people first. What does people first actually mean? For me, it means a number of things. I'm going to share some of those things with you today. But before we get to that point, I just want to share a little something with you which really symbolises people first for me. Hands up, show hands to people that know about the Super Bowl that happened recently. Hands up those of you that have watched or heard about the halftime show. So the halftime show was developed by a guy called Dr. Dre, who was a member of a band so many, many years ago. What was interesting about that show was 20 minutes. Do you remember the halftime show was 20 minutes? And they had to get quite a lot into that 20 minutes. What was remarkable was Dr. Dre put people first. And let's explain to you what I mean by that. He had Eminem, he had Mary J. Blige, he had Snoop Dogg, and he had one other person. Do you know who the person was? We'll come back to him in a minute. Kendrick Lamar. He had a really good mix of people and they all had a certain amount of time that they could perform on stage. What was interesting, Dr. Dre arranged it all and paid the nine million pounds for it all to happen, but he put other people first to make the show happen. 
you've got a really good mixture. There's a female in there, there's a white rapper in there, there was, there was New York from 50 Cent, there was an LA theme with Snoop Dogg, and it's been tipped as one of the best halftime shows ever because Dr. Dre put people first. So what does people first mean? I hear a lot of people talk about leaders, and they always say, yes, I'm a leader. I put people first, I'm a leader, I'm a leader. When we use the word leader, we think of leading. We think of someone at the front. We think of someone at the front leading and pushing, you know, getting people to go forward. I want to challenge that today about people first, because I don't think it's about leading. I think it's about something much more deeper than leading. It's about words like empowering. It's about words like support. It's about words like structure. It's about words like framework. It's about one of the most important words, inspire. So here we go. My wisdom passed on to you. What if to be a person that inspired people, and by inspiring people, that then meant that they followed you? How powerful is that? That's an image I want you to keep in your head today about inspiring people so that they follow. Sometimes leaders is based on a label that someone gives you or a title. You are the leader. So then people automatically do what you say because someone's given you a title. What if you inspired people with no title? You inspired people by the way you walked, by the way you talked, by the way you sound, by the way you raised your voice. By the way you talk gently, what if you can inspire people so that they then followed you because of who you were? So many of you might know this question in the room, but do you know how much of communication is verbal? Anyone? Guess. Five to seven percent. Five to seven percent. Any more guesses? Twenty-five. Twenty-five percent. Any more guesses? Twenty. Twenty. Any more? Thirty. Any for any more? 30? It's actually 7%. So that means 93% of our communication is done by not talking, by the way we look, the way we smell. Actually, three people already today said, you smell really nice today, Stephen. <laughs> Which proves my point. It's by your tone of voice. It's about, about the way that you care. It's about all these are the things in terms of the way that we communicate. And sometimes we think we underestimate the power of communicating without always saying words. And it's a key thing. It's around how we make people feel. So, so people first is about how we make people feel. Now, you probably saw I had this thing held in my hand. Now, Whenever I do presentations, I've never done PowerPoint presentations in my life. I've always done presentations like this. And I always have a little card with me, and it has a few words on there, and the words simulate conversation for me. But today I've brought this along. It's my daughter's magnetic clock. And the reason why I brought that along with me today, because when we talk about people first, the one thing we have to do is we have to give time. We have to give time to people in order to put them first. Now, I want you to have this vision as I talk. In your team that you work with, whether you are in charge of people or whether you work within a team of people and you're all at the same level, wherever you work within your environment, think about the amount of time that you spend with those individuals. Whenever I start work with a CEO or board of trustees or a senior management team, the first question I ask is, how much time do you spend with your people and how well do you know your people? And the question, the answer that always comes back is, I know them really well, I spend loads of time with them. And I always look at them dead set in the eye and go, I'm going to give you another chance, I'm going to ask that question again. <laughs> and then their face changes, and they realise that I'm being serious here. And we get the piece of paper, and we write down in seconds and minutes how much time you actually spend with your people. Real time. And how well do you know Dorothy? Do you know a cat's name? Do you know her dog's name? Do you know her children? Do you know her partner's name? Do you know what she likes to do in her spare time? Do you know what, where she went on her last holiday or the holiday before that? What's important to her? Do you know the answers to those questions? If your answer is no, then you're already 
in my opinion, are disadvantaged in terms of getting to know that person and building relationships and putting them first. Putting people first is about time. It's about making that time. How many of you in the room, if I say to you, how are things going? And you've said this before, I'm really, really busy and I've just got no time. Show of hands. <laughs> yeah, we all do it. Or when someone says to you, have you done X, Y, Z, you go, oh, I just don't have time to do that. Lies, 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 you do have time. And I'll tell you why. We all make choices. And when we have teams of people, we all make choices on what we want to do. So when you haven't got time, it's because you've decided a choice, made a choice to do something else. So you do have time, but you've made a choice to do something else. So you've got to think to yourself, the things that are really important to me, and I really want to give people that time so I put them first, you've got to be organised, you've got to think about things, you've got, you know, you've got to do things ahead of time to make that time. But just think about that, and if I get you all now to do the test of, let me write down a bit of paper how much time I actually spend with my people, I think you'd be absolutely horrified. Horrified. Because then the question is, well, how can I raise productivity? How can I make the money go into the bottom line if I'm not actually spending time with people to allow them to be more proactive, to allow them to do the things that I said earlier on, which is around motivating, empowering, delegating, all of these things which enables us, enables us to put people first. So I'm, going to, I'm going to describe another picture for you. What if being the best leader was not about leading at all? It was about this, it was about building platforms, building structure. It was about not being at the front of the stadium so I can see the concert, but about putting someone on my shoulders and pushing them up so that they can see the concert. Think about that for one minute. What if being a leader was actually about being at the back and supporting people, moving forward with people? In the army, it's not about who crosses the line first, it's about crossing the line together. Because if you don't cross the line together, it could mean that someone might die on that particular day. So it's about being together. Whenever they do the assault course, it's not about who finishes first. The whole platoon has got to finish at the same time. So think about people first. Is people first about creating frameworks, platforms, supporting, empowering, inspiring, doing all of these things from a fallback position. So guess what? What happens if they fall? What can you do in a fallback position? You can support, you can hold, you can do all of those things. So my challenge is, do we actually need more leaders? Or do we actually need more people that inspire and put individuals first, sometimes for themselves, in order that you can move forward together? It's something really important to think about. And now I talk about my career because people often ask me, why have you been so successful in the last 30 odd years? Why have you been able to achieve things? And I actually say sometimes, I haven't achieved a great lot. What I've been able to do is inspire people to achieve and work with me. That's the key. It's not been about what Stephen Barmer Walters does, it's been about what can Stephen Barmer Walters support other people to achieve and do. So when I was at Norwich City Football Club, and the reason why I talk about the halftime show, because Snoop Dogg was on that stage on the halftime show, and he also did a two-step, and I think he's in his 50s now. But what was important to me when I thought about it, in 2015, Norwich City Football Club reached the finals of the playoff, and I was in charge of everything to do with the end user, the family support of the customer. So my job was to sell as many shirts as possible, to create an amazing atmosphere, not just on the build-up to the game, but also at Wembley Stadium. Yes, it was very scary. Um, <laughs> and I remember having a discussion with my then marketing manager, Daisy. And Daisy said, it's the big weekend, BBC One's big weekend, and Snoop Dogg is coming. Wouldn't it be great if we could do something? And I thought, what a great idea. What can we do? It wasn't my idea. It was Daisy's idea. But what I was able to do was facilitate and support Daisy to make that dream come true. Those of you that remember in 2015, Snoop Dogg indeed did.
did wear his own personalised Norwich City Football Club shirt, not only at the BBC One big weekend, he was seen wearing it as he got on the plane to fly back to America. <laughs> now, you might think, was that a big achievement? It was a huge achievement. It was on the front cover of Sports Illustrated in America. We were, we, it was talked about all over the world. Norwich City Football Club, Norwich City as a city, Norfolk as a county, was talked about all over the world. Because we made a decision in that little room with my team that this is what we wanted to do. I didn't come up with the idea. Someone else came up with the idea. But I was able to support that person, put that person's idea first, and make it happen. And I can remember when we went to Wembley on that Monday, and the hairs in the back of my neck were standing up, when I had to introduce our football team to the stadium, and the fans went absolutely mental. And I thought, this is what it's all about. And we won that game 2-0, because Middlesbrough just didn't turn up. We wiped the floor with them, and we got into the Premier League. But what was important about that whole build-up, months before, weeks before, was I put people first at every corner I could to make that happen, to make the behind the scenes happen. Yes, the boys had to go on the pitch and play the actual game on the day and win it, but there's so many things that had to be put into practice, had to be sorted out in order to make sure that every single fan had the best experience in the world but more importantly, that our football team believed that they had a city, a county behind them. So that when they went on that pitch, they delivered for them. And that's because people were put first. The time was spent. We encouraged individuals. Sometimes people with probably not all the capability, but they had the will and the energy to do things. But by putting people first, it's amazing absolutely amazing what people will do if you put them first and you really care about them and you really support them and you really empower them and you really inspire them and you really present them with a strong platform so that they can build and step and step and step and step and reach and reach and reach and reach and even when they get as high as they can you can still push them further to support them that's what people first is all about when you think about the pandemic and the last two years and how it's been the businesses that are now coming out of that and doing well at the people, the business that put people first over that period of time. The people that were supported with a phone call, with an email, with flowers, someone talking to them through a mirror, through a window, all of these different things is why some businesses are now starting to get some traction because they put people first. It was the most important thing. The challenge we've all got now is, the, you know, as we start to move away from things, is that we continue that ethos of putting people first. I would not be stood here today if it wasn't my style to put people first, if it wasn't the first thing I thought about. Not the bottom line, not the mission statement, not the strategy, but the people. Because what happens, anything you want to achieve in business has to be achieved through the people. So putting people first enables you to be able to do that. And it's something that stayed very close to the top of my career and the things I've always done, whether that's working for Norwich City Football Club, whether that was working for Jaeger, whether that was working for um, John Lewis, whether that was when I was working in America, in the Middle East, in Europe, in Africa. I've worked all over the world. The same things apply. You put people first, you support them, you encourage them, you motivate them, you give them the time. You give them the time when, when you all go away from today, if one thing I want you to take away from this is the time. Because it is the one bit of all of this that can allow us to fall down if we don't make the time. And making time is not about saying hello in the morning, even though some bosses don't even do that. They're so busy <laughs> focusing on the day, the hello doesn't even come out. But it's not just about saying hello, it's about saying hello and meaning it. It's about how you make people feel. When I came in today, I had my coat on, it was a little bit cold, I kept got to the door, Lucy was there, boom, hi, great to see you. She made me feel ready to do this. She made me feel confident. She talked about the worm thing, 
two years ago. Two years ago, she still remembers, it's amazing. Um, you know, she made me feel confident. So a lot of the time, it's not about what we say, it's not even about how we say it, it's about how that makes the person feel that you're talking to. And a lot of putting people first is about how you make them feel inside. It's about how you make them feel. I've seen some very inexperienced people that probably haven't got all the knowledge and all, all of the experience and all of the um, ability and intelligence to do what's necessary. But because they feel a certain way, they've been able to deliver a lot more. So this feeling that we all, we're all very much in the, in the UK very scared of talking about, we're in America, they don't care, they talk about it all the time, their feelings. We really struggle to talk about that in this country. We, very, we struggle to talk about it in the business sense as well, feelings. But you all know, sat down, if you feel a certain thing, the way you apply yourself to it is just so much more passionate, so much more in the moment, so much more on it, because you feel a certain way. And you can, you have the power to do that. And I say to, to, to business owners all the time, and business leaders, you do have that power. You do have that power to make someone have a good day or a bad day by the way in which you make them feel, by the way in which you dress them, by the way in which you put them first. And that's what this is all about for me. So if you can take that away with you today, that would really make me feel great. It would really, make me feel like this 20 minutes halftime Super Bowl show was, was really worth it. But it is about the time. It is about the time. You cannot stop it. You cannot rewind it. You cannot fast forward it. The time is the issue. The time is the bit that you've got to make to be able to put people first. And guess what? They will not let you down. They will not let you down. When I was given some huge targets at the start of one season, this is what you're going to do, this is what needs to happen, I wasn't scared because I knew the people would get there with me because I'm going to put them first. And by putting them first, they were going to achieve those things. I'm going to share another story because sharing stories is how I connect, how I engage with people. It's, it's how I've got from being born in 1970 into poverty and as a black kid in a, a really deprived place and all of those things, which we'll talk about another day, to where I am now. 52 in a few months' time. At that point, you meant to say, God, he's nearly 52. He doesn't look 52. <laughs> um, to 52 is by my emotional intelligence and having the ability to do two things. I'm going to share them with you. So my success is based on two things. Really? Only two? Only two. And my grandma talked about these things when she was alive, and I never really understood what she meant by it, but I do now. So the first thing is this. My smile. Okay? <laughs> This, this, powerful. I smiled and nearly half the room smiled back. Okay? Smiling is powerful. So that was, that's my number one, smiling. And the second thing is putting people first. Putting people first. They're not just words to me, I really feel it. And those of you in the room that know me, that have been contacting me before, will know that. I don't say that, I don't say it like, that's what it's about for me, it's putting people first. And it's about doing this. It's about saying, not saying, I have to do this, but I get to do this. I get to do this. I get to take my daughter to school in the morning before school because I'm self-employed. I get to pick her up from school sometimes. I get to take her to dancing. I don't have to. I get to. I get to. Change I have to to I get to. It totally changes the whole narrative. It changes the feeling. It changes everything about how you, how you feel about that person that you're communicating with. It changes about this thing around giving time. I get to. I get to spend time with this person. I get to talk to this person. I get to. I get to. I get to. And I know you know what I'm talking about because it will happen on Mother's Day in a few weeks' time. It's, it's not going to be, I have to do this. I get the opportunity to spend some time with my mum. Same thing happens at Christmas time with family and friends. The same thing happens on birthdays. I get to. But what if I get to was something that was just part of your life? It wasn't just about those special moments and times. But I get to do that. I get to spend those precious, precious me, uh, seconds. My dad died last year in August and I buried him in September. And it really makes you think when you lose someone very close to you around, I get to. I got to spend these last few months with him. 
I didn't have to, I got to. And it's really, really important that we think about that when we're trying to give time to other people and we're trying to put people first. So I want you to really take that away with you today. Also, what I want to share with you is time is a killer. I know it is. And I know sometimes we have to prioritise to get everything done that we want to get done. But what I want you all to do today when you walk in is to prioritise people. Put that at the top of your list. There was a survey done um, by Forbes a few years ago. And it's a crazy survey that they did. I can't believe they actually did it, but they did. They basically spoke to people that was nearing their end of life. Because they wanted to find out what were the things that those people wanted to do that they didn't get to do, or they thought they didn't get to do. And top of the list, top of the list, was to build more relationships. Top of the list. Top of the list. And it really made me think about the only way to build relationships is to spend time. The only way to do that is to put people first. So when I'm ever on a train or a bus or a plane, wherever I am, I have a rule. And that rule is I talk to the person to the right of me and I talk to the person to the left of me. I don't care who they are, I'm talking to them. Why? Because that's how I engage, that's how I learn. I don't learn through reading books, unfortunately. I wish I did, I wish I could read more. I just struggle. Maybe I haven't read the right books, I agree. But I develop and educate and learn more through contact. So I've already met people today, I've met for the first time. And already I've, I've got some takeaways I'm going to take away. So building relationships was, was, was top of the list, which then made me think about how many of us go through life and don't think about building relationships and talking to people and getting to know people. And it's not about being shy, because you don't have to say too much. You can, and I've just told you that only 7% of communication is done by by verbal communication, I've already just told you that, 93% is done by body language, by the way that you look at someone, by the way that they smell, by the way you move. So we already know that you don't necessarily have to talk. How do children communicate sometimes from different parts of the world when they get together? They start playing, and you're like, how does that happen? How does that happen? If you put a whole load of kids in this room now from all parts of life, all from around the world, that don't speak, that their common language is not English, they would still play, and they would still communicate. So building relationships is really important. Silence. So, I'm Stephen Barmer Walters, and I'm challenging you all, when you leave today, to put people first. Thank you.